Welcome to the July-August issue of Global SMT and Packaging Magazine. Uh, we're delighted to bring you this issue, which is full of information about Semicon West, uh, which is coming up in San Francisco in July. Uh, it also contains an interview with Stefan Hafrell, who's the CEO of Comet Group, which is celebrating its 75th anniversary. The title of my editorial this month is From Riches to Rags and Back to Riches. This month, we're busy preparing for Semicon West, as I said, in San Francisco. This annual event has been the foremost semiconductor and advanced packaging conference and exhibition in the United States since 1971. During this time, the event has gone through many metamorphoses. In the 80s and 90s, it was split over two locations as the Moscone Center was not big enough to cater for this massive exhibition. Wafer-related processes and equipment were located in San Francisco, and back-end packaging and assembly and test were located in San Jose at the San Jose Convention Center. Post-2000, when manufacturing moved to Asia, Semicon West consolidated on the Moscone Center site in San Francisco, and even shared the space with other exhibitions such as the Solar Industry Show and among others. Fast forward to today and Semicon West is once again in the ascendancy, with a significant increase in exhibitors and conference programs covering each side of the three-day exhibition, which occupies both the North Hall and the South Hall. Manufacturing is back. North America is powering towards a $1 trillion electronics economy, one of three central themes at Semicon West this year. The others being the path to net zero and the path for talent. Of course, the change in fortunes for this stalwart of the North American electronics calendar can be firmly attributed to the US CHIPS Act and the huge amount of government and industry related inward investment. That investment started with FABs and the race towards sub 5 micron chips and has spread out to OSATs and other parts of the value chain with the Protecting Circuit Boards and Substrates Act making its way through Congress as we speak. The Protecting Circuit Boards and Substrates Act aims to fill one of the remaining holes in the value chain towards making North America self-sufficient in high-technology electronics manufacturing. It comprises two components, a financial assistance program modelled on the US CHIPS Act, and a 25% tax credit for entities that buy American boards. The second part raises some concerns, as it effectively makes it uneconomic to buy non-American boards and sanctions all countries outside of America, including many of its allies. While most people agree with the current trends of regional reshoring, sustainability and de-risking the supply chain, it is taking grandiose government programmes to make it happen. But governments change, and so do their policies. And when they do, the results are sweeping. Manufacturers would be well advised to always keep one eye on the horizon. That's my editorial for this month. Please let me know what you think. Make a comment below. We'll be more than happy to read them and respond uh, appropriately. So until then, we hope to see you next month in the Moscone Centre at the Semicon West. We are on booth 6241 in the North Hall. Uh, so until then, uh, enjoy the rest of your summer. <laughs>